mom because she cooks tea every night. I love mom. Did Hey, that me didn't it. I love my mom because she's the best mom ever. And she gives good cuddles. She gives good cuddles, yeah. Because she puts the TV on. Because <laughs> she puts the TV on. Yeah. Joshy, why do you love your mum? Because um, she plays games. I mum because she cuddles me when I'm sad. I like my mum because she makes stuff for me. I love my mum because she makes me feel good. I love my mum because she makes good food and she cares for me and she's always there for me. I. Mum. Yep. Mum. Mum. Because. The daughter. She. She. Is. It. Fun. Fun. <laughs> Hello and welcome to St. Peter's Lutheran Church Online. It's wonderful to have you joining us in worship today. And a happy Mother's Day to those mothers who are joining us this morning. Hopefully you've been spoilt this morning already and hopefully you'll be blessed today in our worship service. If you look on the notes section in the online platform, you'll be able to follow along with the, the service order this morning and this afternoon. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing together our opening hymn. Friends in Christ, let us confess our sins to God our Father and ask Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. We confess that we are born in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word and deed by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart and we have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. We deserve your eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, 
so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. I ask each of you in the presence of God who searches the heart, do you confess that you have sinned and do you repent of your sins? Do you believe that Jesus Christ has redeemed you from all your sins and do you desire forgiveness in his name? Do you intend with the help of the Holy Spirit to live as in God's presence and to strive daily to lead a holy life even as Christ has made you holy? As a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce the grace of God to all of you. On behalf of my Lord Jesus Christ and by his command, I forgive the sins of all who repent and believe in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 31, and we say this responsively. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me free from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies, from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. We now hear our readings. Our first reading comes from Acts 7 from verses 55 to 60 but Stephen was filled with the Holy Spirit he looked down towards heaven where he saw our glorious God and Jesus was standing on his right side then Stephen said I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing on the right side of God the council members shouted and covered their ears at once they attacked Stephen and dragged him out of the city. Then they started throwing stones at him. The men who had brought charges against him put their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. As Stephen was being stoned to death, he called out, Lord Jesus, please welcome me. He knelt down and shouted, Lord, don't blame them for what they have done. And then he died. Our second reading comes from John chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. Jesus said to his disciples, Don't be worried. Have faith in God and have faith in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. I wouldn't tell you this unless it were true. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. After I have done this, I'll come back and take you with me. Then we'll be together. You know the way to where I'm going. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? I am the way, the truth and the life, Jesus answered. Without me, no one can go to the Father. 
If you had known me, you would have known the Father, but I am now now on. You know, you don't know him, and you have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, that's all we need. Jesus replied, Philip, I have been with you for a long time. Don't you know who I am? If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. How can you ask me to show you the Father? Don't you believe that I am one with the Father and that the Father is one with me? What I say isn't lay, isn't said on my own. The Father who lives in me does these things. Have faith in me when I say that the Father is one with me and that I am one with the Father or else have faith in simply because of the things I do. I tell you for certain that if you have faith in me, you will do the same things that I am doing. You will do even greater things. Now that I am going back to the Father, ask me and I will do what you ask. This is the way the Son will bring you honour to the Father. I will do whatever you ask me to do. This is the word of the Lord. And together we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
My friends, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. We heard in our Gospel lesson in verse 8 of John 14, Philip saying, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. If we go back to John chapter 12, we also hear this. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with the request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. And we jump to the beginning of John's Gospel, to chapter 1, from verse 43. And it says, the next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. The last couple of months, my young Patrick has constantly been asking Jenny and I, why can't I see God? Why can't I see Jesus? Another question I often get asked is, Dad, what does God look like? Dad, when we're all in heaven, will we be able to see God? Usually ends up going, but I want to see God now. This really isn't any different to what Philip is asking. Show us the Father and that'll be enough for us. And Jesus responds to Philip, look at me. See me. You have found me. And when you do this, you have seen God. Wow. That's a massive statement. But it's nothing new because Jesus has been dropping hints along the, the way through the journey of John's Gospel. None more obvious than the I am sayings. See, when Jesus says I am in John's Gospel, he's saying I am God. And this goes back to Moses who asks God in the burning bush, who are you? Who should I tell people who you are? And the response from the, the burning bush is I am who I am. And Moses is to go and tell the people, I am, has sent me, has sent Moses to you. In other words, God is, I am, the mighty God who created the heavens and the universe. I am the God who separated the land from the water, who put the stars and the planets in their place, who made the creatures of the earth and the fish of the sea. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. I am, there is no other like me. This is a massive statement. And yet, as John narrative unfolds, the disciples don't understand who Jesus is. And we can miss this too. And Jesus has just said to his disciples in in the beginning of chapter 14 he said I am the way the truth and the life and they miss this huge point that Jesus is making and so we have Philip saying I, I want to see God I want a holy encounter it makes me ask is, is Philip looking for the glory when Jesus is pointing him to the cross is Jesus showing the holiness of God amidst the dirtiness suffering and normality of life is Philip's picture of God different to what Jesus is showing him Perhaps we also think like Philip. And you know, today there's people who are willing to admit that Jesus was a good bloke, a wise and inspiring teacher, a man who revealed many new ways to live. But they don't see God. They don't see the divine. And John's testimony challenges us to look at the signs Jesus performs and decide who Jesus is. And for John... He proclaims that Jesus is true God and true man. You know, for Philip and for my son Patrick, and perhaps for many of us here this morning, we need to hear Jesus tell us, 
look at me and you will see who God is. You know, in my mind, this leads me to the question, who is Jesus, so I can answer, who is God? And so we need to journey through John's Gospel and see what Jesus says about himself. And the I am sayings are a good place to start. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and life. I am the way. I am the vine. But then we can also think about the interactions that Jesus had throughout John's account. We think of Nicodemus. We think of the, the woman at the well. We think of the, the man born blind. We think of Mary, Martha and Lazarus. We think of Jesus washing his disciples' feet. And what we learn is that Jesus accepts, loves, teaches, challenges, corrects and leads people. He reveals the God who is love, who comes into the world to be in the world, to be with us as one of us. How often do we think, though, that God is vindictive, judgmental, angry. But God must always be seen through the lens of Jesus Christ. And sure, Jesus shows righteous anger to those who neglect and abuse the vulnerable. Jesus speaks of judgment of those who reject him. But yet he also embodies grace, forgiveness and mercy. John's church is saying, we are the people who believe in God, who has been revealed to us decisively in Jesus Christ. So Jesus is more than a, a good bloke, a, a moral teacher. He is God, but a God who comes among his people, who walks the dusty road, who shares, who sheds tears of grief, who experiences pain and suffering and death firsthand. God is closer to us than we often think. So to say, I want to see God, or I want to know what God is like, is, is seeking a, a worldview change. Because when God opens your eyes to see Him, we're able to see His presence in the suffering, in the lowly, in the rejected, in the vulnerable. And this can be difficult for some to accept a God who works in weakness. And this is not the perfect picture of what people expect God to be. And you know, I know and I suspect that many of you know that God is powerful, that God is mighty, but he reveals himself in the small things. And this doesn't make him weak, it makes us significant. It shows his nature, a nature that's revealed in Jesus. And so when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, he isn't necessarily making an exclusive statement, but a, a pastoral word of hope to his disciples and to us. Look at me and see who your God is. But ultimately, like Philip, we're left with the choice to believe or not to believe that Jesus is more than a good bloke, a prophet, or a teacher. And that's at the center of John's gospel. Who is Jesus? If we go right back to the beginning of John's Gospel to the very first chapter, John says, no one has ever seen God. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. So God the Father is made known in Jesus. So is it simple enough for us to simply see Jesus as the one who reveals God? Well, on this side of eternity, we live by faith and, and not by sight. And as we listen to the testimonies of those with Jesus, may, may our faith come alive. Now, if we want to know God, seek him in his word and ask for your eyes to witness God at work. See God at work around you because our God is active in this world. That's what it means to have a God who is in mission who is working in the world through you and through me. See, when Philip invited others to come and see Jesus, he was taken back by his teacher status. 
But today the challenge is given. I'm in the Father and the Father is in me. There is more to me than what you see. So when Patrick asks, what does God look like? I simply tell him he looks like Jesus. What does Jesus look like? Well, like you or me, Patrick. But he was also God. And so I asked Patrick, what stories about Jesus can you remember? When he feeds people, when he dies on the cross. Well, that's what God is like. And God lives in our hearts too. And so we're God's vessels in this world. We act in love. We act in forgiveness. You know, sometimes imperfectly, but still God chooses to use us to be his people. He has created the church, you and me, to be his witnesses in this world. So my friends, may the peace of God which passes understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
Uh, I think by my mum, Julie Schubert, she'd have to be the most influential person like on my faith. And that's just purely because um, being from a farming family, you know, we can like we ride the waves of the highs and lows with drought and just hardship. So having like that solid foundation of faith that like everything's gonna be okay and you know, like no matter how bad it gets, like God's gonna always be there. And I think a perfect example is the things that we're going through right now. So we've had four years of drought and you know like no matter how bad it gets god will eventually provide for us and he gives us everything that we need and the rain has just been incredible so i think that's just yeah like that's what it's about yeah so like with my faith like definitely when i was a kid it was you know like i went to church because that's what my family did and then when I moved away and I got a little bit more independence, like I spent a bit of time away from the church and I, it took me probably a couple years of just like life and going through, you know, like the journey of faith and because faith is never linear. It's never, you know, you just keep building your faith until you reach wherever your goal is with it. It's always gonna be up and down and that's what I've definitely found. So, you know, I went for two years without doing a lot with the church or doing a lot of like working on my faith and then realizing how much I actually need it when you start to grow up and you need something to lean on. So I use my faith a lot to get me through with training, traveling, you know, so many unknowns, especially at the moment with COVID-19, like we don't know when our volleyball is gonna return. And like, I'm just putting that in God's hands and like, like because I know that no matter what goes on in my life, like things are gonna be fine and I've, been a big advocate for reading your Bible like every day and just trying to stick at it because the more I read the more I learn and the more I really enjoy it so and also having the technology to be able to go online and watch the online church services I think it's really beneficial if I'm traveling and I can't get access to church because I'm somewhere in Thailand or in China so it's been it's been a journey but it's very doable when for my generation where we use you know social media and the power of social media so it's been, it's been a journey and I'm sure my faith will continue to grow and it will continue, like it just rides the wave and slowly we're getting better and I think everyone's just trying to get better at the end of the day and I think God can provide us and help us with that. Yeah, I, th I think it's really fascinating when you get into the elite sporting world, how many people are actually of faith. So, and I think a lot of people need the faith because sport is an environment where you don't know the end result. You know, you're, you're all out there competing, trying to win those games. And God always, I'm a believer in it. He always provides what I need. And there's been times where like I've just prayed because we need, I need the extra prize money to like pay bills or pay rent or whatever it is. And God will provide that for me. I just need to put my faith in that everything's gonna be okay. And so that's like the biggest thing with faith, like traveling and talking to other athletes and seeing their opinions and growing up in it. And you also get to experience a lot of other cultures and a lot of other religions as well. And I think you become a really like accepting of everyone else. And that's probably the one thing that like I take when I read majority of the New Testament is like Jesus was really accepting of others. And no matter what you're going through, no matter where you are, like he's always, he's a people person. He wants to spread love. and. I think that's the like something that I really connect to is just trying to be in that community and growing that community. So, and that's why I think it's great having the online church because I think we're all coming together on Sunday and we can sit around and still connect in that community. And that's what it's about at the end of the day in church is that community. I think everyone's really missing it. So it's good. Yeah, uh, Bible story. Oh, I've got a few favorite Bible stories, but my, absolute favorite Bible verse is life and death is in the power of the tongue and for those who use it we eat its fruit and that's Proverbs 18 21 and I think that's because no matter where I am if I'm just gonna ask God for something and if it's essential and I really need it he will provide it and that's me having that relationship with God talking to him daily you know reading the Bible it's just there for me all the time
I think um, probably it's never going to be it's never going to make sense and you're never going to have all the answers today and you're going to find the answers over a long period of time so the stuff that you may be struggling with in today's faith or like what, where you are at the moment with your faith it might be really confusing and you might feel really lost but if you put the work in if you take the time to read to listen to talk to people to connect ask questions i think you can never ask too many questions with god and faith so i think i just encourage young people to continue trying to learn and trying to grow because eventually it will start to make sense and i'm not saying i've got all the answers and i i don't think i'll ever have all the answers but i continue to read and i continue to learn and ask jason and ask my mom and ask anyone who's around so it's it's pretty yeah i think that's where i found the most value is just continue to grow and it will eventually make sense and you slowly to yeah like you slowly connect the dots over time Uh, I think the last thing I'll leave everyone with is just read your Bible daily. <laughs> I think that's the <laughs> that's the number one thing. There's a lot more in the Bible than you'd probably been told or go to church. There's there's so much more in the Bible. There's so many more stories. There's so many more lessons. And yeah, that's that's where I've really found my benefit with my faith is just reading the Bible. My friends, let us come before our God in a time of prayer. We begin by praying for, for um, Mother's Day. My friends, let us come before our God in a time of prayer. And we begin by having a special prayer for Mother's Day. We pray. Gracious God, we pray for new mothers coming to terms with both the joys and demands of motherhood for pregnant mothers, expectant and wondering, or fearful. For those mothers who are tired, stressed, ill, or depressed. For those who struggle to balance the demands of work and children. For those who have to struggle with difficult decisions about whether or not to become a mother or to have another child. For those who are unable to feed their children due to poverty. For those whose children have physical, mental, or emotional disabilities. For those who have children they do not want. For those who raise children on their own. For those who have lost a child through death or abortion. For those who care for the children of others. For those whose children have left home. For those whose children have rejected their love. And for those whose desire to be a mother has not been fulfilled. Bless all mothers that their love may be deep and tender and that they may lead their children to know and do what is good, living not for themselves, but for God and for others. We pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day. Lord, continually guide us in all that we do as your church. Help us to be witnesses and to share your love with those around us with confidence. Holy Father, we continue to pray for our world in this time of COVID-19. Lord, continue to protect us and provide wisdom to, to doctors, to scientists, and to our government leaders. Lord, be with those within our community who live in isolation and fear. Continually um, provide them with your peace and with your love in these days. Lord, we pray for our schools as well in this time. Lord, continue to bless teachers and watch over them, taking this time where their work is quite stressful and time-consuming. May Father bless the work of our Loxton Lutheran School too. Continue to bless all the staff, um, continue to be with all the support staff, and continue to guide and lead our Principal Brad. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would be with those whom we know to be in need at this time, who are, who are sick, who are recovering, Lord, who are, who are caring for others. Lord, who are preparing for, for surgery. Lord, hear us now as we name those people on our hearts at this time.
Lord, help us to continue to be your vessels in this world, to, to show people that your son Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Help us to show love. Help us to, to show grace. Help us to be people of forgiveness. Lord, we ask all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you peace. Amen. And we sing our closing hymn, Blessed Assurance. because she is amazing and she gives awesome hugs and she helps me when I'm scared. Because she always cares for me. Because she cooks good food. Because of everything she does for me. Because she's funny. Because she cooks for me. Because she's a great role model. Because she's very patient. Because she drives me everywhere. Because she gave birth to me. Because she supports me. Because she makes me food. Because she is selfless. Because she goes out of her way to make me happy. Because she encourages my unconventional hobbies. Because she's so kind and supportive of everyone. Because she pays my phone bill, even when I'm supposed to. 
Because she does stuff for me, even though she doesn't want to. Because she's there for me. Because she's good. Yep. Happy, Happy birthday! birthday.